folks hello and welcome back to the narin agarwal show today's episode is phenomenal trust me i have somebody who is i would say a rocket he's a rocket if you hear him speak and what all he has achieved despite the challenges he faced in life i have with me the founder of knowledge capsules an ngo started by mr rajiv poddar he's a tedx speaker and education reformer literally been teaching you'll discover in a very challenging atmosphere since the past 40 years spreading top class knowledge in a quirky fun manner to everybody regardless of race religion gender creed caste you name it and he's taught it he's taught in slums he's taught in corporate offices and he shares his knowledge through his platform knowledge capsules so happy to welcome rajiv podar ji to the show Rajiv sir how are you doing It's been a complete pleasure Narendra and I really really look forward to these sessions you see whenever I take these sessions I look back upon me what I used to do at at your age then I feel that I can't even tie a knot and you people are doing such a great job fantastic keep the good work up and try to make a change as they say <laughs> in the world as possible Thank you so much for your kind words sir Sir I want to start off uh with asking you i don't know if people who are listening right now have seen your ted ted talk it has more than 150k views and it's it's like it moved me actually i was a little teary eyed um after seeing your ted talk especially the first half i want to ask you about your journey folks who cannot uh see us visually we are on zoom and rajiv sir has a story a very challenging thing that he faced in life and he still continues to face and i want to uncover that through his own words so rajiv sir what happened that night and what has that story and journey been like for you where you had to face such a huge challenge in your life you see with all the modesty and hum- humility i as i said it by ted talk i normally used didn't used to share my stories with anyone because i thought that it was like glorifying blowing my own trumpet i used to keep it low down not to magnify things or uh, out blow out a proportion not to get sympathy but after this pandemic thing happened now 2020 march so then i started to see that people are becoming very serious very tense very were concerned about the future and i thought that i should open out a little bit and talk talk about myself because my journey looked like almost very similar to what you people are experiencing so with all the modesty and humility as i said please please forgive me people are blowing my own trumpet if, but if i don't tell you won't know so the purpose is to inspire to motivate and to never give up attitude so here's my story you people are in lockdown for the last 2 years i guess the last 2 years this lockdown quartet word came into our life our dictionary since march 20 otherwise we never you do the what is the term quartet bed right. and i came in that game very first i came in this game 42 years ago it might be sound incredible but as they say facts are stranger than fiction I have been in lockdown quarantine for 42 long years 42 and a half you might say January 1980 I was a normal child 9 years old just like all of you had gone through your childhood normal playing school days and everything was the same so January 1980 one night everything fell apart what happened it's still a mystery I just tried to narrate as I said with all the humility and modesty in January 1980 I think it was 26 or 20, 27th January 1980 I guess so I came back from school I was studying in class 2 I was just in that day time there were January to December sessions but so just passed class 2 and December nowadays it is an April to March in uh, sessions in India but that in in, in uh, that time there was January to December session I came back from school in January and after a normal day just normal uh, studying and eating and playing I went to nice bed At around one o'clock in the night, I felt severe stomach pain in my bed, in my pain, and my stomach is severe stomach pain. My mother thought that might be there some food poisoning. We eat something, and automatically, uh, I was a nine-year-old kid, so the pain could come. So my mom gave me the home remedy, put in a ra and some water, and made me sleep. Yeah. Next day, when I woke up, the pain was gone, but there was a slight fever. My mom said that's bunk school today. I used to study in a very prestigious school in Calcutta. that was earlier name hindi high school which is now called bella high school yeah so i used to study in that so my mom said bunk school today you know you know it's feverish so you better sleep so the moment i got up from the bed i fell so my mom thought it's weakness the fever is there she picked me up i was a small kid at that time and she took me to the other room and i was sleeping 
after many hours, I said to my mom, I don't feel my legs. I don't feel my legs? Hmm. What does it mean? My mom panicked. She immediately took me to uh, the doctors were called. Then they realized I haven't gone to the washroom for many hours. I was immediately rushed to a very famous hospital in Calcutta, Woodland Nursing Home. There was I diagnosed, I was treated, the testing was done. And then the doctor said, I have lost the power and power and sensation of my body below my shoulders. It just happened like that. So the sensation is right now, like in your hands and your face. This, and is only, this is the only part I have it. The other part is all gone. I was, was a, there's nothing left. Everything was dead. Normally, normally, normally a, a person gets a paralysis when a person has a fall or a back injury or an accident. Our most important organ in our body is the head. The head is instructing me to move this pen. The instructions are passed through from the head through our spinal cord to the entire body. And that is how the, it functions. So this is our main part. And the spinal cord acts like a pipe through which the water flows, the instructions flows. When a person gets an accident or a injury, then and the place where the uh, spinal cords get damaged, from there the, the instructions stop going. Just like there's a leakage, Correct. So the water stops flowing. So that's what happens. But I had no accident. I had no injury. I had no nothing, no damages. But I had paralysis. I was rushed to, at that time there was very, very famous, now also it's there, very famous hospital in India. That time was Vello. It was in Vello, Christian Medical College. It was in Vello, Chennai. In south in, of India. Yeah. South of India. I was rushed to there, there and they took everything. I was I stayed there for months. I was sent to a rehabilitation center, Bagayam. There they taught me, take me everything, but nothing. The doctors still 42 years now in the line, 1982 to the 20. No one has been decipher, able to decipher what happened that night to my body. What happened? No one has a clue. Just some doctor said there was a fire inside your body, and because of which your everything was burned except for the upper, this hand and this head. What caused the fire? No one. There's a very famous movie called Guzarish. There's a movie called Guzarish in Hindi, which has Rithik Roshan and Ashwara Rai as lead stars in which Hrithik Roshan was a magician. One while performing a magic show, a trick, he fell, he injured his spinal cord and he got paralyzed waist down. He had a fall, he injured his uh, uh, spinal cord, Correct. but I didn't do anything and I had a injury. Yeah. So that there is, is no traceable cause to what happened that night no, when you were nine years old. Absolutely no one has a clue what happened that night, what caused it. No one has a clue whatsoever. And it was only when I was nine years old, as all parents will do, my parents went helter skelter. They, were, they left no stone unturned. They went from every place they could possibly do. I was treated with allopathic, tantrics, all type of quirky doctors and everything that was there. The moment someone said, you go there and it will be taken care of. My parents used to rush, but to no avail. After a few years, I told my parents, I know I have a wheelchair life. Most of the things that normal human being does, 90-95% of the things that I won't be able to do ever in my life. I just have to get up in the morning, eat, sleep, again, repeat the same thing. That is how it was. And I took it. And that is how things have been for the last 42 years. Wow, it's, it's really shaking when you say that, you know, you've been on a lockdown since 42 years. And when... When we hear that, you know, it's almost shaking to the core to hear. But I have to say something. Your spirit is phenomenal. Like, it's something else. Uh, I can't believe that you even share this story with so much ease just to inspire others, sir. You see, there, one of my students told me. I never used to tell this story. If you ask any student of mine before 2016, hardly I tell. They used to tell. When 2016 was the first time I was invited to a... Uh, college, Bhavanipur College, for giving me my TED Talk. That was the first TED Talk we held in Eastern India. TED Talk were very rare, not there only in Calcutta, in Eastern Zone. So I was there. Then I was rushed. I, I named that lesson called, I do to, I, uh, the TED Talk is called Last Lesson. Last Lesson. After, after I teach the student for the entire year, and when, the, when they have the last class with me, after which I will, I will no longer be teaching them because they will be moving towards college. Then I take that class and I tell my story as a thing that 
never ever give up hope nothing is impossible and i named it the last lesson wow that do, and that is why it is called the last lesson so that everything else is there but this is if you ever try to give up hope then you will always feel oh god we have come across someone because if you become a doctor you need a degree if you become a lawyer you need a degree if you become a t- teacher at least you need to need a graduation degree nothing else i teach i have only been taught till class 2 class 2 was my last year that's incredible i was going to ask you this so you have had no formal education yet you've been teaching people about these topics you've started this foundation and i also know you've spoken in the same company uh with names like rajat sharma who's like one of the biggest news um runners of india and uh, raghunam rajan who was the former governor of the rbi reserve bank of india how is this possible how do you not have a formal education beyond grade 2 class 2 and yet now people come in thousands to listen to you and listen to you regularly and you are a knowledge spreader and an equalizer in the country how is that possible you see class 2 i didn't as i said that was a journey of how i became ill can i how you give a teacher how i got some little bit of knowledge you see whenever people tell me you went live with raghuram rajan i didn't go live with raghuram rajan directly or something someone told me that sir you come and be a part of that and you ask question i didn't go live with someone called uh, 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 rajat sharma i i was featured very any many places it's not my victory it's a victory of knowledge someone thought i was capable enough to question them or to talk to them so i always say knowledge is supreme there is not no substitute to knowledge so without formal education class 2 that doesn't mean only thing that help me is knowledge as they say in hindi those viewers who are not able to understand hindi i use a lot of shero shayari poems in hindi so one of my favorite shayaris belongs to is shares is about knowledge i will say it in hindi first and then i'll translate into yes. english ki ज्ञान के मंच पर सब एक समान है विधि का विधान पलट दे ब्रह्मास्त्र ज्ञान है स्वास से ठान ले गाट बांध ले कि कर्म के कुक्षेत पे न रूप का माता है न झूठ का माता है न जाति का माता है न बाप का माता है सिर्फ ज्ञान ही आपको आपका हक दिलाता है वट डज इट मीन इट मीन्स नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम नथिंग एल्स विल वर्क फॉर यू नथिंग एल्स विल कम टू योर सपोर्ट ओनली थिंग दैट विल वर्क विच इज बियॉन्ड एनी थिंग इज नॉलेज इफ यू हैव नॉलेज you can conquer the world and that is what i acquired so how i spent my days how i became a teacher 1980 onwards there was no tv no computer there was tv used to come for half an hour one hour in the night there was no computer no phone no pubg no netflix no that is what we that is how we spent that entire two years of lockdown boy watching it play <laughs> they were not there if they had been there i would have binge watched the entire life i would have wasted over <laughs> watching this only thank god they were not there there was only one fresh thing that used to come in the morning every morning there was only one fresh thing that used to come and that was the newspaper wow 1982 the telegraph was launched that changed everything that was a turning point in my life as i say we when you reflect back when we go back and see when we become author of our own story we we'll let other people learn from our life without having to live through it that is now i see the turning point was the telegraph that was the only fresh thing that used to come early morning i used to take it up the english newspaper and as to read hardly any knowledge hardly any education i read and read and read and wrote and the more i read more i learned the more i read more i learned uh, that is why i say that the teaching is the best process of learning wow. i read and read and read and automatically i didn't knew that that those reading years newspaper reading years the simplest of things that you could do every day can transform you that is why i say whatever you do do it with passion do it with wow. shiddat never know kab ja ke kahan pe kaam aa jayega so here's a question how did you teach yourself the language so till grade 2 you kind of knew english but you just kept on reading somehow or the other asking people did you have a lot of friends around you to help you guide you uh we were a low middle class family staying in kolkata in a place called manikpal so we used to stay in a fourth floor fourth floor flat it was a flat on a fourth floor and there was no balcony no veranda and there was two small rooms the only thing i could see out of the windows were the sky the eagles and the uh, and the roofs around the bil- of the buildings surrounding us there was nothing else visible and i used to watch and watch and watch 
whole day. I did a PhD in what? I did a PhD in lizards, eagles. You won't believe that because that was the only thing to do whole day, watching the ceiling. Can you beat that? Like a small boy, just imagine yourself being a small boy sitting. Lizards. I used to scare about lizards. That is why I used to track every moment. Where are they going? What are they doing? Because I used to stay in bed, so it was very scary. That is why I had developed. I have developed. Right? I have found or discovered that the only thing that can, you can and this will be a very big thing for everyone who was watching it. Everything, anything. Lizards are the most hated thing in the world, and we just just bore it. The, the moment we see a lizard, we get scared. So just keep an eggshell anywhere and everywhere in your room, and I promise you, even if they come. they will disappear you will never come on the post ah, lizards a, don't like eggshells ah huh? you discovered that you i'm telling you that is a brahmastra that is a magic potion that you should use keep it on the windows the other the terrain and they will run away they won't come any this one <laughs> so i used to track eagles eagle i knew what time eagles will start flying in the sky and this because that is the way to pass time because there was nothing to do but i read the newspaper and that was the passion i gave up from the first page first para first word i used to read last page last para last word i never knew but you never know whatever you do do it with passion it might be useful to you in future that is the telegraph the telegraph showed me the world it showed me politics sports religion culture geography history anything and everything that was happening i used to read and that is why i think i got wow. developed a lot of knowledge which i can share with people now wow you should be the brand ambassador of telegraph <laughs> honestly <laughs> reading mm. every page every inch and what a story you've had so since then you got into this um, desire to acquire knowledge and how did you get to sharing it and that that newspaper as you said become became your best friend so one thing is absorbing the knowledge how did you get to sharing it and that too in such a fun quirky manner where people want to listen to you you see that was that came later on because that was but that the reading the newspaper got me an arsenal got me something mm. which knowledge then i spent more time then i moved on to hardy boys nancy drew zakata christy enid blyden sydney sheldon frederick wow. i used to that was the only time pass which i had not see just like you people wait for a serial series to launch and you will watch it the same way i used to wait for to get a hand on my book and a book in my hand and used to read i used to exchange collect it from friends you see those times was if i say those days were dull gloomy dark it will be an understatement just imagine sitting at home and doing nothing friends were there in that building but they had to go to school tuition they had to play on the ground where are they but i used to stay in the fourth floor no veranda also i can't even see outside and look at people enjoying or going in the car what you won't believe i used to stay in the fourth floor and down there in the lane is my friends used to play cricket i had a mirror you won't believe this mirror mm. i used to take it out of the window and from fourth floor out of out of the window i used to see the reflection of oh them going down and these i'm telling you again exaggeration there is no exaggeration in what i'm saying i am whatever i'm stating is understating it i'm not over exaggerate exaggerate to bahut dur ka baat hai i used to watch it like this outside ki what they are playing so just to watch live cricket happening with my friends so there was hard times but wow. that, smooth seas never made a good sailor when the going gets tough the tough gets going this is how i lived and this is how i became so those were the learning process the books and the novels that i got that was the thing but i had no intention or no inclination that one day i will become a teacher you had no idea how will i know because i had no education yeah. how can a person who's, who is not studying who is not done any manual or anything how can he expect that he will become a doctor how can he become a lawyer you need an education for that you need a degree for that it was complete fluke that i became a teacher wow. and as they say but that is what is sena it might look dark it might look there is a there is there is another tunnel but there is never dark is always lighter than the tunnel you just have to be patient little bit more patience it was required by me this room became my jail this room was a place where i used to go then we moved on to salt lake a suburb in calcutta at that time 1989 and from there on the next part of my journey started wow and i became a teacher and that is a different story altogether so what is that story i want to uncover how did you become a teacher from you see, yeah you see teacher matlab this is again a shocking thing but as is like such is that fiction the teacher 
thing came again out of the stroke of luck. It's not luck as they say. It is all written destiny. We just have to be patient and wait for the thing to happen. We just be there, hang on. As I say always, I used to say that that dog, you're always young, so young, too young. So we need to hang on to wait for the right time to come. So it happened just by flu. Normally, a student's uh, a person's education gets over at the age of 19, 20, 21, 22. My journey of education started at that time. It was pure flu. A neighbor, a neighbor's daughter was having an exam next day. I was almost 21, 22. A neighbor's daughter was having an exam next day. And she was, and her tutor became ill. So she wanted, a, she was studying in class 5. So she wanted a small LCM with safe question to be solved or something. So the, the daughter, the neighbor told me that please teach my daughter once or twice. She wants to learn something. The tutor is not coming. Please teach her. I taught her that day. Next day, she came up with another problem. I taught her. I was, it was obvious. I knew I'll say myself and all these things because I was 21, 22. It wasn't that I was an idiot, something like that. I taught her that. Next day again. And that became a process. Since there was no TV, no distractions, I used to bring their books, study in the afternoon, morning, and teach them in the evening. It is unimaginable, but that is what they are. That is how I became a teacher. I taught by learning. The more I taught, the more I learned. The more I learned, the more I taught. Morning, I used to lead, read their books. In the evening, I used to teach them. And that is how, you won't believe, I class 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I did my history, geography, civics, maths, algebra, everything, ge geometry, everything and anything I learned by teaching those few neighbor's kids. Wow. And that is how I became a teacher. It is unimaginable, but those five, seven, eight years, when all of you will leave your education, academics life will be over. That time, my academics last time started from class five onwards. And this is, as they say, the rest is history. Wow. Sir, why are you so passionate about bringing knowledge to everybody? I know you've taught in, uh, you know, underprivileged areas in India. You've taught in corporate houses, in well-doing MBA colleges. Why, why this inspiration to share knowledge? You see, I started this knowledge organization called Knowledge Capsules. Because just like when you go to a doctor, they go and give you uh, vitamin A, B, C. They find their deficiency. They give you a capsule, a tablet. Or a pill for that. I found there was a knowledge deficiency. Education degree marks everyone was acquiring because they were going to school, well yeah. good teachers were there, everything was in pro. But I thought that we have become parrots. Parrots good in the sky, not in the classes. <laughs> we have learned to find rote learning every day, day in, day out. You remember? There's a very famous Indian movie called Three Years. Correct. In that, the peon used to know every answer because. He knew what the lecturer is, what the professor is going to speak after every word. Because that the same thing was repeated year after year after year. The pure knew the, all the assignment, all the homework. And that is what uh, stopped him. What is happening? They're teaching the same thing. No innovations, nothing. Teachers are also laid back because they also know why do they need to change the format? Same thing we have to do. Why? There's all, already too much of headache in our life. So that is why they say people have become parents. Students have become parents. And I took, learned everything by the, the newspapers. So I thought education degree marks is okay. But if I give a little bit of knowledge, that will become a deadly combination. Wow. So I wanted people to become the Amir Khan, the hero of that movie, Three Idiots, rather than the Chatur, the uh, side character, the kick, the person whom we used to be, used to kick every taunt and mock. The, the character the whom we used to knock, mock was also a very successful man. It was not a successful man. But if you want to stand out in the crowd, if you become the hero, you need to have knowledge. And that is how I started this knowledge capsule deficiency. I teach them what? I teach them about the latest happening in and around the world. China, Taiwan crisis, Sri Lankan crisis, Russia, Ukraine crisis, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, Venezuela, you name it, whatever we cover. We don't spread anything about hate or politics of India, nothing like that. We don't do indulge in anything, not even a word on it. Because I don't want to take size. I just try to keep impartial, unbiased view. Still, people say that sometimes you're biased. But as Abraham Lincoln once said, you can please some of the people all of the time. You can please all of the people some of the time. But you can never please all of the people all of the time. We try to make <laughs> it balance so that we don't take. But that is how I teach 
that's what i teach if you show photographs to them i teach and these jo what i teach economics accountancy i teach for class 11 12 free of cost all over india an academy is a very prestigious platform there also i teach they call me i said i will teach but with only one condition is free of cost that is what i do but what i do apart from that is knowledge capsule latest current affairs in a light hearted storytelling attitude i display them people say ki are those are youtubers are there why do we need to see your thing there are loads of things available right now but as i say our is different so that like a cliche dialogue oh every producer director he says that this movie is different but let me assure you ours is really different i don't use much hindi the language our native language otherwise if you use so much of uh, uh, shy shero shari said poems to describe <laughs> the job but that is what i'm trying to do that we're trying to make a difference every kid whoever is in contact all age group 8 to 80 years all class of state of people no high no low everyone is there they are learning and learning now there are wow. class 5 6 girl five students 8 9 10 years old they know bitcoin some people say what will they know by doing bitcoin what will they know by doing taiwan they don't even know india rupee they why will they teach it but i tell them catch them young when the famous players virat Dhoni, Sachin, Ronaldo, Usain Bolt, when they went first to the ground at the age of four or five, they didn't know how to play. They didn't know how to bat. They didn't know how to run. Slowly they happen. That's what we are trying to do. Catch them. Little by little they will go, and one day they will become the superstar, and they might win the jackpot in the KBC. Ha! <laughs> KBC is who wants to be a be a millionaire in the Indian version? Con Bhaniya Chakravarti. Sir, this is amazing. So. you started you saw this deficiency in society that people are well trained they have degrees but they have a deficiency of knowledge and so you formulated knowledge capsule to cure that deficiency the cool part is you don't charge any money you never charge the money even though you teaching at, at a platform called like an academy and you conducting all these sessions you never charge money that's a principle that you follow don't you think that if you charge money it will be better and it will help you fuel more resources what is your reason for not charging money you see some people say that i do a lot for my students that is why this is not fair sir you do a lot what i do for my students is nothing i am not even paying a small debt for or which they have put on me what i am today it's all because of my students it might look like a cliche dialogue but as they say na dil bade hai na paise bade but students ka ehsaan bahut bada hai so much of in debt i am because of students so whatever i do for them is matlab like, insignificant again kitri shay dialog but imagine 42 years in this room staying in this room in lockdown quarantine it's all because we have been 2 years and we get so desperate to go out if you fall ill for 4 days 5 days then you feel that oh no god no, no, i want to go out and have fun but it's all because of the students that i've survived so whatever way i can give it back repay the debt and that's what i'm doing so money i will not indulge it my family takes care of me and they have told me very explicitly that you have whatever you are is because of student then you are going to be that only wow 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 there's so much power to that like literally everything coming out of your heart and energy is just to serve and cater to enhance the knowledge uh, without any sort of self interest from money i don't think money is bad but your mission is so large that money can't fuel it you just feel like you want to spread uh knowledge i want to get into something fun right now sir um what's a topic that interests you right now uh something that's going on and i want to hear from you like 5 10 minutes about the topic what's the current area of interest or a topic that's really interesting you right now and what is your take on it you see if you want i can show you a 10 minute capsule live so that people who are watching it they can understand Correct. you can connect me So you can connect to me through Narain or directly to me. My social media handles and everything is there. Instagram. We'll put all your details, and if we, they want to reach out to you, if they want to connect, conduct sessions, we'll put all the details in the description below. Knowledge capsule. You can reach out on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and we'll put all your details and email address also. So I'm there on Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, everywhere. I'm there. Twitter, everywhere. Because you see, since we are trying to do, and you won't believe again with all the modesty and humility. people have cracked big big interviews they have gone and excelled in gdpi 
GDP, our group discussion, personal interviews, not only that, when they come, they come and tell the exact thing about Taiwan crisis, Bitcoin, then the people listen. And it is not for the toppers, the person who are above average or the excellent or the genius. Those people who are mediocre, below average, average, those students also, because everyone is not the same, but they can excel in every when when those average student, below average student, mediocre, normal guy like us. They speak and tell about the exact thing that is going on in Taiwan, Sri Lanka, Russia, Ukraine, or all this. Then people take notice, okay, oh God, this person is saying, that is what we want to do. I have got kids who are doing it the same thing. So if you want, I can share a small thing with you so that you will, I'll share it very fast way. Then you will understand how Correct. I tell the story and how to be connected. Yes. So shall I proceed with that? Yes, please. Let's do a small I, knowledge capsule session right now. Can I, can I share a screen? 100%. Please so, share your screen. Yeah. Having said that, the people who are watch, uh, listening to this on audio, they might not be able to see the screen, but they'll be able to follow your audio. No problem. No, why they are. Chan, that, uh, for that, you have to go to Narain's. That they will be able to understand everything. Narain's <laughs> YouTube channel also they can go and they will yeah. be able to follow everything. Okay. But uh, let's go. I will be speaking very fast. It's, this is not the speed at which I speak. There we go. So excited to hear this knowledge capsule live with you through the medium of this podcast. Sir, stage is all yours let's begin the journey. i'm going to give you a short description of the session which i take it will be fast and furious i take a little bit of time but since we have already brought told about my story i'll just make it as short and speedy as possible so you to get the gist of what we do so we are talking about a country called tunisia 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 was ruled by a ruler called ben ali ben ali tunisia ruler now you might find tunisia where is tunisia Tunisia, the, the story today is called the Arab Spring, the Facebook Revolution or the Jasmine Revolution. So uh, odd. you are all educated, but still many people are not aware of the exact details. So that is what we are trying to fill the gap. It's not a mistake of your part. It is a mistake that we have so engrossed with the entertainment with the uh, app all around so that we are missing out these things. So our story starts in uh, Tunisia and the uh, story is called the Arab Spring, the Facebook Revolution or the Jasmine Revolution. Where is Tunisia? Not in the Syria. Syria, ke, I lay a lot of stress on geography so that people get absolutely clear that where is Tunisia and other countries. There are almost 195 countries in the world. Some Sometimes Google say 196, 194, but we assume 195 countries are there in the world. There is a country called Syria. We are not talking about here. Below is Egypt. Side by side is Libya. And there is a very small country called Tunisia. Small tip on the Africa, on the northern tip. To make it more clear, this is Tunisia. Chotus are Tunisia, are Tunisia, small country called Tunisia. The ruler was Ben Ali. Ben Ali was ruling for 24 years. It was a dictator and he had a complete control over Tunisia. All the politicians, journalists, lawyers, judges, sub, everything was in his pocket. And he was out and out corrupt and the people were fed up of him. That time, what happened? How it all started? It, that's the thing. The story is called Arab Spring, Facebook Revolution, Jasmine Revolution. December 2010, exactly 12 and a half years ago, December 2010, there was a small fruit where there was a poor fruit vendor, Mohammed Bazouzi, selling his fruits in a city of Tunisia, small city of Tunisia. Tunisia is a country, a small city of Tunisia. This fruit vendor was selling his fruits. At that time, a police jeep came. December 2010, we are talking about. A police jeep came and police officers came out and there was a small squabble, a quarrel between the police officers and this poor fruit vendor. You might be thinking, why I'm telling the story? Just wait. Is absolutely everything is connected. Oh. So the fruit vendor came down. The fruit vendor was there. Police officer came out from the police jeep. There was a tussle. There was a quarrel. There was a uh, 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 squabble between them. There's a tutu meme. And at the end of the day, at after the fight, the police officers, they were in command. They threw his fruits, broke his cart, took away his valuables, and they were going away. They insulted him, humiliated him, everything. Why going? One of the police officers slapped this person tightly across his face, this small fruit vendor. The fruit vendor would have tolerated everything, but he could not tolerate one thing. He was slapped in the middle of the road by a police officer. That is also okay, but the police officer was a lady and that touched him. That made him furious. He was humiliated, insulted, that's okay. But since he got furious, he was already depressed. And when he got hit by a lady, he just got and went mad. What he did, he went to his house, collected the paint varnish or something which can be lit on fire, went to a politician's house and put lit himself on fire. That fruit vendor was so angry 
that he said that this enough is enough. This is a life I cannot tolerate any mother further. And he put himself on fire. Now, the moment he was put on fire, his family, his friends, acquaintances, relatives, they rushed to him and sent him to the doctor. They got angry. What is this going on? And they started an agitation in front of the police station. Ki, this boy is suffering because of the atrocities by the police. The, the politicians are corrupt. The army is corrupt. The, the leader, the president, Ben Ali, is corrupt. And they started. That was the spark. From 10, it happened 100,000. People started to gather around the police station. And there was a huge protest happening. That was getting scary. When it started to spread, word of mouth, there was a that this fruit vendor had tried to kill himself because of the atrocities, but it was because of the what people are doing. The Ben Ali, the president, got the news in a few days that in a small city, this is these protests happening. He immediately sent his private jet. He was instructed, as, sir, if he dies, there will be a lot of chaos. He sent his private jet to collect this boy, took him to the best hospital in. Tunisia admitted him. But in January 2000, the protest started all over. But in January 2011, just 15 20 days after, he died. On 4th of Jan, he passed away. This is the real scene where this guy is still sleeping and is in bed. And Ben Ali had himself gone to visit him. But he died. Now, the moment he died, he became a martyr. And there were protests throughout Tunisia. They all were baying for the blood of. Ben Ali. They wanted that he is the leader. He has to take the problem. He has to take the blame. He is responsible for the entire bias. And they went bonkers after him. And this is how it started. Ben Ali, who had the entire army, police, everything in his command, he got scared. So many people. He sent his police, army. They said, how many will we kill? How many bullets we will use in front of our own people? They said, we surrender. And they didn't do anything. And so Ben Ali had to run away, had to run away from his own country, the country which he was ruling for 24 years, which he had complete control because of that martyrdom of that boy. The, the thing they didn't stop there. You, this photograph, this cartoon is so classic. A poor fruit vendor by putting himself on fire has been able to dethrone the dictator's throne. Such a beautiful message put across. The thing they didn't end there. It just started the martyr of Tunisia and it started now. Now, how, now how, what happened? These, all these countries have dictators and people are fed up of them. Now, what happened? Since t Tunisia happened in 2010, it f flared up to Egypt in 2011, January. Then it Bahrain, then Libya, Syria. Every country person, people started to protest against their ruler. At that time, Egypt was ruled by none other than Hussein Mubarak. He was there for 30 long years. He was more in command, more powerful, no one in front of him. And all of a sudden, people started to protest for no rhyme or reason. People thought they've got an inspiration for Tunisia. If they can do it within 15 days, that 24-year ruler was running away in 24 days. Why can't we? They started to come out in protest in a very famous place in Cairo called Tahrir Square. Just like India's India Gate and all those famous places, Ramlila Maidan. Egypt has a place in Cairo capital, Tahrir Square. People started to assemble thousands and lakhs and started to chant slogans against Hussein Mubarak. He again sent, just imagine the amount of people. Hussein Mubarak sent his army, police, everyone. No one could do anything. And within a few days, even he had to run away. The protest was so big, so large, that the president was forced to leave and run away. When he ran away, after that it was found, he was one of the most corrupt person, the richest person in the world because of the corruption charges. He had to run away. As I said, don't underestimate the power of a common man. This is how it developed. Now, why I'm telling this story? What is the difference? Again, I'm telling you, it's all connected. As they say in history, history might not repeat, but it often rhymes. That is what we are trying to say, how it connects. Now, what happened to Tunisia when Ben Ali ran away? There, a new government was formed and a new group was formed which was made up of businessmen, lawyers, labor union, that was called the National Dialogue Portrait. They won the Nobel Peace Prize for bringing peace and stability in Tunisia in 2015 because of the good work they've done. Not only that, Tunisia, Tunisia was the country where they appointed the first female prime minister in the Arab region, the entire Arab region. First female prime minister. Just imagine the amount of progress. This was in 2011. That happened to the, this is the 2021. That happened in 2011. 
10 years, Tunisia has progressed so much. And uh, in the Indian India won a gold medal in Javelin Neera Chopra in Tokyo Olympics. And a young Tunisian shocks the swimming field to win Olympic gold. They have made huge stride. Not only that, not only that, this year, this year, this year, this year, Wimbledon or Wimbledon tennis, a Tunisian woman went straight up to the Wimbledon finals. She lost. She was a runner's up. I'm a proud Tunisian woman standing right here, right now. Now you might be talking, okay, this is good history. Where does it connect to us? It really connect to us. Why I'm telling you. This is the latest articles. Now you see. Higher than Arab Spring. Why? It is, it is the this revolution is called Arab Spring, Jasmine Revolution or Facebook Revolution. Why it is called Facebook Revolution? Because that was the only social media at that time which was connecting people. Suppose people have to come at a place. Social media, Facebook helped them. Four o'clock at this place, five o'clock at this place. That is why it is also called the first social media revolution or the Facebook revolution. Now, why it becomes scary now? Why? Arab Spring, there was one more reason. People were angry with their dictators. Because at that time, the price of food was rising like anything. Now you see what has happened. The UN food prices are higher than the Arab Spring. Just see, Arab Spring made the food prices were here. After the Russia-Ukraine crisis, this was 8th of March 2022. Prices have gone up to that level. Now why it is scary, I'm telling you here. The last time the wheat prices catapulted higher than this was we got to the Arab Spring. Social stability in the Middle East depends upon the wheat price. Wheat is the staple food of Middle East, that area. And if the prices goes up, people get angry because if they, you can do anything, but if you don't give them the food, then they will rustle and they will make noises. And as they say, don't underestimate the power for common man. And automatically, this thing started. Imagine this is the New York Times article. Rising food prices threatened to crush household like Middle East. Raising the possibility of kind of mass popular unrest not seen since the Arab Spring a decade ago. Just imagine, is the president of Pakistan the first leader of a country with the house because of current out of inflation? The cost of living in Pakistan has been rocketing up with sharp rise in prices and rupee falling. Arab Spring part two incoming. So this is what they say. That time history, now it is rhyming. It is happening the same thing. They are saying prices. Now, what happened to those Arab rulers, spring rulers? The Ben Ali, he was sentenced in absentia for 35 years. He died in exile in Saudi Arabia in 2009. Hosni Mubarak died in 2020. This is how it happened. That is why I showed you four large leaders in the front page, that how it stalled at it. That this front page, which I showed you, this one was that. This Ben Ali, that Egypt, Hosni Mubarak, Libya, Syria. These are the stories which I tell. I said it very fast because I just wanted to give you a sample how we conduct the sessions, why I think it is different than what we, what you others see. But now you have got a gist. Now when you see, oh, now just a joke to crack at the last. As they say, there's a woman's ban. Behind everything, there's a woman's hand. In this case, literally, it was a slap which changed it. The world went into a tizzy because of that. And we can, and one of the worst affected country was India. Because India imports all of the oil and oil prices shot up because Middle East is very famous for oil. Oil prices shot up by $30, $40. And India was a complete mess because of that one slap which had happened. This is the way we conduct session. And imagine that, as I said, it is eight to eight, eight years to 80 years. In this short 10 minutes, which I just spread out like anything, you must have learned quite a lot. This is what we do. Light-hearted storytelling attitude with a lot of visuals, a lot of appealing visuals. That is what we do. Wow, so this is phenomenal. Thank you so much. <laughs> what a presentation in about 10 minutes. And for those who don't know about the Arab Spring, and a lot of people actually have not heard about the Arab Spring, this is a super presentation. That is why you said it's a capsule. Um, people say, okay, sir, what happened after that? I said, you say there is a very famous thing, Chinese saying, you just need to lit the candle once. It will burn by itself. I have tried to lit the candle of knowledge. Arab Spring, Jasmine Revolution, Facebook Revolution, Tunisia. Now it is all up to you. If you want to go further, you can tell about it. You have the access. Now you will come. More perspective will come. And as they say in Hindi, Gyan Bhatte se barta hai. Bade ka idea to bade ka idea. More I teach, more I learn. I taught, write out the thing. Now what happens? After hearing all this stuff, some curious people do Google. And they come up with interesting facts. And they send me, sir, sir, just see, we saw that. And that is, I don't have to do any more research. What I have done is done. Now they come up with everything. And I add 
keep adding the slice to it. This is how, as they say, wow. it grows up. This is what I say. I request all of you, whoever are you, just connect me to any school, colleges, NGO, all high schools. Even if you get a Dhirupaya Bari school or it's a small slum, doesn't make a difference. Online education, pandemic had too many negative things. But one positive thing is that online education has become acceptable and adaptable. So we can reach out to people. I will conduct the sessions absolutely free of cost and try to make the change. And let's see, one of you can become and win the jackpot in KBC. <laughs> wow, sir, phenomenal. One last question. Do you think that a similar Arab Spring is happening in this Asian region with Sri Lanka and Pakistan? Uh, see, going in the crisis that they are going You in. see, it can't be a mere coincidence that Pakistan first, Sri Lanka second, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, all the countries are having that same thing. They might have bad rulers, they might have a bad economy, but it can't be a coincidence. It's all linked to that. I, if I explain the Russia-Ukraine crisis, then you will come connect the dots again more. And that is what we want to do. This is, a, this is current affairs. I have told the story till now. After that, I covered the story about Wimbledon that the lady won, the Tunisian. It happened in June, July. So this is how it happens. There are a lot of things, if, 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 whether the world is connected or not, or whether things are happening, whether it is mere. You just all attend these ca capsule sessions, which I take once in a week. And I think you will be enlightened. Sure. And half an hour will be worth wasting on me. Just as how <laughs> we do it. And I hope you will be not regret it. And not wow. Be so this is awesome. And I think what's most powerful about this session that you shared and one that I've seen earlier is that people can get random facts, but to connect it and make sense out of it is what is challenging and what causes knowledge, right? And what you do very successfully and amazingly is that you connect these loops, like these threads from that history, that past to the Wimbledon to now and what will happen and what's happening right now. And I think that's where the true magic lies. And that comes from assimilating all the information, processing it. And that's truly a talent. So You see, I have, don't have anything to do. I am the most well, most free, most ordinary person in the world. I have nothing to do. I only excel in news, news, news. So where people just see news, I collect stories, I collect the nuggets and try to get them together. It's not that easy because so many information, this is a process that has to be read through so many news, so many articles that you read and correct and to verify it so that there are no poor fiction, no more uh, wrong things about it or uh, uh, the information is not incorrect. I try to do, but sometimes mistakes happen, but that is what we do. That is why I request all of you sincerely, please connect me to anyone and everyone you know. I don't care if there is five people, 50 people, 500 people. Welcome, everyone is welcome to do it. And just we need to, just we need to do something. Meaning, that means we need to shake the foundation of education in India. It should not be rote learning, it should not be parrot learning, it should be creative thinking, what to think, what to think, why to think, thought process has to increase. That is what we are trying to do. Sir, phenomenal talking to you, hearing your story and getting a true knowledge capsule in this episode with you, the founder of Knowledge Capsule, Rajiv Poddar, sir. Great to have you on the show. All the Shero Shairis, all the poems that I used were all copied from somewhere. Only one is original, with which I try to end all, most of my session. This is my original one. This is the English. You Google it, you will find it anywhere. And this is the how it goes. This is a small tribute to my students. When students go low, I go low. When students go high, so do I. Because you all are the wind beneath my wings. This is the one. You are the wind that makes me keep floating. Higher I go, it's all because of you. Superb. Thank you so much for sharing, sir. I will see you soon. And we'll hopefully record another episode with another knowledge capsule in the coming future. Thank you, sir. Okay, it's okay. Hello and welcome again. I hope you really enjoyed this podcast. If you did, share it with one person that you can help. Just go is say madat mile. And if you like this podcast, you want so much more insightful information and knowledge, check out the other podcasts right here. I will see you very soon in another episode.